good Saturday morning and welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on 790 The Bet. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray on this uh, March the 19th. And uh, I really am... uh, Glad to be in the studio, even though I am solo this morning, because uh, my man Frank Barton has been spending some time in Kentucky uh, with Goose, and uh, and and I'll let Frank explain that uh, in just a minute. Uh, but he is uh, basking in the glories of this past week, uh, and I know he's a happy man. We're glad to have Frank with us on the third Saturday of each month, and uh, later in the show. Uh, Ron Wong will, will check in with us, and Ron's on the road also. He's at Dale Hollow Lake for a big brush piles, uh, uh, crappie media event that he's up at uh, Dale Hollow Lake. But uh, anyway, I'm glad to have you, Frank. How you doing, Frank? Good morning, Larry. I'm doing pretty well. You are doing good well, aren't here. you? Yeah. My, my, our man Gus did good, right? Goose, Goose was a good day. I mean, Goose, Goose excuse me. I, a couple I, of days. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, he, was a, he was a good dog. Well, I'm sorry. Had, had, I'm sorry. Had a, good, had a good series of tests and got a ribbon, and we're headed back now. Well, I'm sorry I mentioned another dog you had uh, that I have trouble uh, that, that I won't I won't ever forget Gus. Okay, so if I call yeah, yeah. If, if I call Goose Gus, it's just part of my friendship with you over the years, but. Uh, uh, Goose did finish third, and tell our listeners what where where were you? I was at uh, the the test was it's called the Bourbon Hills Retriever Club. Yeah, and it's about oh, it's about uh, an hour and a half or so, two hours north of Nashville. And uh, first time I've ever been up here. It's a brand new club, and this is actually their second test that they've ever put on. So. Wow. Okay. And so they did. They did a nice job. And Goose came through. Well, uh, you know we got a new sponsor. We've been mentioning uh, had him in studio her not too long ago, but I didn't really have a chance to talk to Tori Show about uh, the Wally Hatchets restaurant itself. Uh, you folks, uh, if you haven't been to Wally Hatchets, uh, you need to go. Sixty four thirty nine Summer Avenue. Uh, you will be greeted uh, once you step in. It's almost like family atmosphere in there, and we've got. Uh, on with us this morning is the owner, uh, Tori Schof. Good morning, Tori. Hey, good morning, Mr. Ray. How are you? I'm doing great. And, I, and you know, a lot of folks uh, might drive right past you uh, because you're in such a location there, and sometimes it's, it's hard to find a parking place. But uh, you've told us about what the name, where it came from, and things along this line. But tell us a little bit about the menu because I think that uh, a lot of folks uh, – May have not, if you have not experienced uh, Wally Hatch's restaurant, the uniqueness of the menu. Tell, tell us about the menu there. This will make <laughs> Frank really hungry this Saturday morning, okay? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of the stuff that we serve are things that I grew up over the last uh, 40 years when I started cooking, you know, with mom and dad and grandparents and, and things like that. So, you know, I came from a big family. There were six of us kids. And so we grew up just eating, you know, just big, big food mom would make. Uh, all sorts of big things like Mississippi pot roast and a huge oh, yeah. meatloaf and things yes. like that. So, yeah. yeah, we we have those. We have chicken fried steaks, and uh, one of my burgers is called Lipstick on a Cow. We won a, a, two awards from that one. Lipstick on a and... Cow. Don't let that slip by you, folks. <laughs> Lipstick on a Cow. Okay, because the name, oh, yeah. he, he, Frankie does have very u- un- unique names. For these, uh, some of the, <laughs> I mean, when you say lipstick on the cow, what else? Now, I don't know, because you, you serve breakfast, so you're, you're like this, this Saturday morning, you're going to be open at 7, right? You're going to be open at 7. Yes, sir. We are 7 to 2 every day. And you, and, and it's, it's breakfast, but you squeeze in some other things, but it's, it, it's, it's brunch like. So, uh, yeah, weekend's more of a brunch menu. We serve mostly breakfast. That was uh, mostly what our customers wanted on the weekends. Yes. So we do serve the Southern comfort food uh, during lunch throughout the week. And 
Uh, there's a lot. There's a couple of dishes that I learned how to make when I was in the military, and you know, like the shepherd's pie and the balsamic chicken, things like that. The what? What kind um, of chicken again? These chicken names get me. The what was that? Balsamic chicken. What was that again? Now balsamic chicken. Okay. So that is a, a cream sauce. The guy who taught me how to make that <laughs> actually worked for Alfredo Delelio himself, the guy who invented Alfredo sauce. Really? And so, <laughs> yep, he worked for him way back in the day. And when I went there to go eat one day in Treviso, Italy. Uh, um, I I just fell in love with this dish and asked him if I could work in his kitchen for free for a couple of hours if he'd show me how to make it, and he did. And uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of my favorites. Okay. All right. That's one of the things. But you have those uh, unique uh, breakfast items, too, though. I mean, you. Oh, yeah. Your little, your we have one called a, a pour some gravy on me, and if you sing it <laughs> and you order it, I'll give you two free sweet cream pancakes, and that is my biscuits topped with our sausage gravy, topped with eggs. Oh, if you like, we'll put some oh. cheese and tomatoes and green onions to top it off. Oh, man. Uh, I wish that my was pancakes, they taste like cupcakes. Yes, they do. Uh, they're, they're very, yes, very they yummy. Do. Yeah, and you had the and chicken French and waffles. Toast. You have the French, you have the chicken and the waffles, too. I mean, you know, you got those, don't you? I mean, chicken is big. Oh, yes, thing. sir. Uh, yeah, you bet. Yeah, in fact, we were voted top three on uh, uh, for those. I was like, wow, that was pretty cool. That's cool. Uh, and I, and I didn't know that until a customer showed me. And, well, but I also do some, some unique daily specials. Like today I made since it's St. Patrick. I mean, for I made some St. Patrick's Day on St. Uh, some Irish oh, stew on St. Patrick's Day. I figured you did. Okay, yeah. So you, Yeah, and we sold all that quickly. And on Friday I made... Uh, crawfish cornbread topped with shrimp etouffee that I learned how to make down in Lafayette, Louisiana when I was oh my visiting gosh. down there. Oh, my. Okay. All right. Now you're just tempting me. So you really, you don't ever know. It, you just say, you, you come up with your menu. I mean, do you work it out yourself? I mean, uh, what, what's, what made you do that for Friday uh, for the etouffee? Well, I mean, it was, is that ever Friday well, or is that just, just happens? You did it for this. Yeah, that was just something that I I was trying to sit down and think of some things I haven't made in a while and things that I know that uh, my customers like. I call my customers hatchet fans. That's what they are. The hatchet fans like. Yes. Yeah. Well, I know you've got me so hungry. Uh, And this is what you'll find at Wally Hatchets. And we'll have uh, Tori on as many times as we can early and late in the show. But I wanted to get him on this Saturday morning early so you folks uh, can head on over there uh, when they open at 7 and everything is made by scratch. I don't know if that means under, you scratch where you might be scratching, but I it, everything is <laughs> everything is made right there, folks. I mean, uh, in the kitchen, uh, you're going to see Tori, you're going to see his wife, you're going to see his brother, you're going to see kids, you're going to see people that you'll know, and uh, it's a wonderful place to to visit. Tori, I thank you, ma'am. Uh, good Saturday you, morning Ray. to you. We'll be talking to you. Thanks. All, all right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Y'all have a great day. All right. Thank you. Tori Schof, okay. Uh, uh, a lot of you folks, uh, and Frank will bear with me as I go through this. Uh, I really appreciate Tori being one of them. If you'd like to be a sponsor of Outdoors O'Leary, right, just shoot me an email at lroutdoors at att.net. I'll hook you up with one of the great folks here at Odyssey Radio, and uh, we'd love to have you as a sponsor of Outdoors O'Leary, Ray. They can work out whatever deal you want to. But I wanted to give you folks an update out there. Yes, I am dealing with the dreaded C word, uh, cancer. Uh, and uh, it's been up and down days. Uh, Frank knows this. And Frank's been on, uh, I'm, 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 I've been on Frank's prayer list. Looks like I've been on many prayer lists and great uh, texts from friends and uh, emails from friends that, uh, you know, I know God's in control of this. Uh, I do have lymphoma. Uh, I had surgery to remove a mask. And it turned out it was lymphoma, but uh, got a lot of reports, good reports. And so I'm waiting on the next step that I will go see uh, my, my cancer doctor and we'll get things worked out. And, and I'll kind of keep you folks updated because you are part of the family on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Just like Frank's been part of this family for more than a decade that me and Frank uh, have been doing this together. And uh, when Frank's on the road... It's just not the same as looking to my left, uh, Shelby, Shelby McCall, and seeing Frank right there, and and waiting for him to lead into one of our segments. And we'll we're gonna work that out with Frank. But you really, Frank, now you're really enjoying what you're doing, aren't you? I mean, uh, this is something you wanted to do, and once you retired, it's giving you a chance to show that that love for uh, working with your dogs, right? I. It's uh, it's much easier 
to do this now than it was back when I had 40 or 50 employees in yes. four different locations. And, yeah. And uh, it was in the power sports business, which meant you had to be open and weekends was a very big day. You know, Saturdays were huge days in the power sports business. So <clears throat> it lets me, now I can, because I've got a great son that can take care of things when I'm gone. And yes, you do. Yeah. I, I just, uh, I'm, it, it lets me, uh, it lets me do what I really love. And that's, uh, uh, play with these great dogs and, and, uh, watch them do what God intended for them to do. When that's he right. Them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it gives you an opportunity. Uh, Frank is no longer incognito. Uh, he has a new truck, you know, and I, and I look for him all over town, just driving around, looking for cheap diesel prices or whatever he's looking for. But uh, it gives him the ability to go on the road and do these events. Uh, so what's next for you, you know, before we, you know? Uh, yeah. I'd say the next, the next test that I've got coming up will be in Tupelo, Mississippi in a couple of weeks. Okay, all right. It's uh, Red, Red Hills Test is what it's called, Red Hills Retriever Club. And then, uh, then we take uh, then we take off for a couple of weekends so uh, we can get uh, go to Palm Sunday and Easter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, come right back. Uh, Hit with, it again. Uh, the Mid South Hunting Retriever Club, my local club. All right. And uh, yeah. I'm actually going to be judging at that at that event. So I won't All be right. running. I'll be judging. <laughs> So, you, can, you can handle and that. And then we just hit hit that and keep on going. You know, there'll be something every weekend <coughs> through, uh, Frank's been through out about the, the middle of June, something like that. Frank's been out in the air too much in, in Kentucky up there. I don't know when he said he was uh, at the... There's, there's definitely <laughs> some pilot in the air right yeah, now. Yeah, and, and he's been in the bourbon country. He said he was at the bourbon field trial. I'm still trying to figure out that, too. So, but uh, let's take a break on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Frank's going to hang in there with us, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> 